Are you cruising through life not always knowing what direction you were headed? Let Live On Purpose with Dr. Paul Jenkins be your guide. Live On Purpose will give you insights into your life and show you how you can become the driver and captain of it. No more aimless wandering. By learning the principles that govern happiness and wealth, you will be able to make personal progress that you have only dreamed possible. And now, here's your host, the shrink who expands your life, Dr. Paul. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Live on Purpose Radio. This is Dr. Paul, the shrink who expands your life, bringing you another episode of Live on Purpose Radio. Welcome back, everybody. I have a guest with me here today, as I always do, in studio. Her name is Angela Ingo. Say hello, Angela. Hello. So glad to have you with me here today. Thank you. I've known you for a couple of years now. Yeah, it's been about that. Got to know you and your husband, Tim, a while back. And I've just really enjoyed my association with you. And uh, we've been through some interesting experiences together. Yes, we have. Including going to the Caribbean. Yes, that was fantastic. That was a kick, wasn't it? My husband's first cruise, and he... Uh, he yeah, held up okay. He, he held up pretty good. <laughs> Had a few uh, queasy moments, I think. It wasn't his favorite. Yeah. But uh had a great experience down there. We... Uh, Vicky and I have gotten to know you a little bit through that association and also through some uh, some other activities that we've just uh, been on board with at the same time. Yeah. And the interesting thing that I would love to discuss with you today, Angela, is the process of change and, okay. how, and how you go through change in your life. Now, you're familiar with this, aren't you? Uh, yes. I am. Now, there's a reason, folks, why Angela is uniquely qualified to talk about change. In fact, I want to introduce people for just a minute to your blog. Just in the last month or so, you've become this internet sensation. (laughs) You are the blogging queen. Well, we may not push it clear to that extent, but you've got a really great start. This little blog is picking up a lot of attention, and I have a sense that this is going to become a pretty big deal uh, because of the value that you're creating there. We're going to talk a little bit more about that as we get into it. The blog is called Imagine Cozy. Imagine Cozy, and you can find it at imaginecozy.blogspot.com. So if you're in front of your computer... Just open up another window, keep Live on Purpose Radio playing, but go on over to imaginecozy.blogspot.com and you'll know what we're talking about here with Angela today. Angela is an expert on taking what you've got, and we're talking in terms of the physical space in your home or in your office, Mm -hmm. taking what you've already got and rearranging it or adding a little thing here or changing a little thing there and creating an environment that is more cozy. Cozy is the word. Do you want to tell a little bit about the how you came up with that? Cozy is a great word. It comes up a lot too, doesn't it? <clears throat> you know, when I was trying to uh, figure out what name to use, we went through a whole bunch of different names and... and uh, Of course, you have to go online and see if that site's already taken. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to figure out, um, and I was doing this with my sister, and, and, uh, you know, the word cozy kept coming up. And so we thought, you know, we got to do something with cozy, Mm -hmm. because every time we redo a space, somehow that word seems to fit in. It works its way into the description afterwards. It works its way, yes. Mm -hmm. So... uh, what you do, essentially, and tell me if I'm, I'm getting this right, you go into an area, and it might be a bedroom, it might be a living room, it might be the whole house, or someone's office, and you look around and you decide, okay, a little bit of color here, a little bit of foliage there, moving the furniture a little bit, rearranging a few things, and the outcome is a space that is more cozy. Yes. That feels better to be in. It does. It's amazing. A mm-hmm. few simple design principles, and mm-hmm. you can create an entirely different feeling space. Now, this might sound like Dr. Paul has totally shifted gears, and he's now doing the home show. <laughs> or, you know, 
one of these shows you see on cable TV, you know, about redoing your space. <laughs> I want to hit that. I want to talk about that because it's interesting to me, and I'll share my personal experience with it. But I also want to talk about the process that you went through personally to get there because I've kind of watched you through this process. Yep, you have. And uh, it's been a transformation, hasn't it? Yes, it has. I yes. think I think there's a lot of people who can benefit from that story too. So that's your introduction to Angela Ingo, who's creating all kinds of value for people in a way that I think you can learn from. So let's tell that story, shall we, Angela? Okay. Rags to riches. <laughs> <laughs> You, how did you get into this? You can start wherever you want to with that. Where, where did this start for you? Well, I've always had this creative flair. I've always mm-hmm. loved doing things with my hands, something that has to do with, you know, I, I graduated from BYU with a, a degree in design. And I've mm. always had that that kind of a love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but... You know, once you're married and you start having children and and you become a mother, your life becomes pretty consumed with that responsibility. And a lot of Mm -hmm. times Mm -hmm. the other things are set aside. So I've done little things along the way. um, But uh, as I've gotten a little further along in years, I've been noticing so many of my friends, their kids are getting uh, into school and they felt like they didn't know they wanted to do something with their lives, so they've just been getting jobs. And I did mm-hmm. not want to go out and get a job. Just the idea of go get a job was just so unappealing to me. Mm-hmm. And so I started trying to just picture and figure out, well, what do I, what do I love doing? What do I want to spend time doing? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, it's been a process. It, it's it's also been, you know, the past couple of years we've been trying, my husband and I both have been doing a lot of um, just learning and trying to discover really what direction we want our lives to be going. And some of that is has been just helping you personally figure out a few things about yourself. You know, what are you good mm-hmm. at? What, do you, mm-hmm. what is it that you, you feel a lot of energy for? When you mm-hmm. do something, when you're finished with it, do you feel depleted or do you feel really excited? Mm-hmm. And um, I uh, had visited my brother in Georgia, and uh, we just did a little bit of redesign at his house just for fun. He, he They had a room that was uh, didn't know what to do with. So we did a few things, and it was so fun. I loved it. I'd never really done that before. Can I just point something out real quick here? Sure. Not everybody loves it, Angela. I, I know. I, I see that. Do you know I'm why this that. is important, though? Here you are. You're talking about, okay, here we are in this situation where we've got to figure out something, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you and your husband are no different from, from me and Vicki or anybody else mm-hmm. out there who's trying to figure out just how to do life and do it on purpose, you know, live yeah, on purpose. so that you're actually doing something you want to be doing, not just on that wheel. Well, a lot of people are are going to hear this and they're going to think, okay, I've heard this before. You know, find a passion, find something that you love. And they're never quite sure what that next step is. You know, what do you do with that? And we're going to talk about that as we get through through your story. But the part I wanted to really emphasize and point out here is that not everybody has your dream. Not everybody has your passion and your desire and your love of this particular unique ability that you have. Okay. So you go into a room and you redesign it and you're energized and you're loving it and you do it all day long. It is so funny. I come home, my husband's like, you have more excitement than when you left. It's really funny. to Right. He he just is like, I can't believe what a difference it is. So consider this for just a minute. There is a reason why you have your dreams. Just think about that for a minute. There's a reason why you have your dreams and your desires and your passions and your preferences. And other people don't share those. But sometimes we get so stuck inside of our own head that we think everybody else thinks or feels the same way we do. Well, they don't. They just don't. 
And that's what makes the exchange possible because you can go in and do something you love for someone who would value that but doesn't love to do it. Yeah. Isn't that fantastic? It is the greatest thing ever. It really is. That creates all kinds of opportunities. So you did this. And instead of just going out and doing something that somebody else said you should do, you know, get a job or something like mm-hmm. that. And I'm not saying it's not it's a bad thing to go get a job. It's not. I'm so glad that people are willing to do that. Yes. I just didn't want to do that. Well, you didn't want to do that. And you you knew and understood that there were some reasons why you have the passions that you have. And then you started to do something with that. That's that's a difficult process, isn't it? It takes it takes work mm-hmm. and it takes time. So you weren't sure at the onset. No. Just had, what to do with all this. No. I mean, as I was going through this, a number of things came to the surface, you know, but this was a gradual thing. It it happened mm-hmm. a little at a time. And I do a little bit of uh, of it with my sister at her house and oh, it was so fun and then I did a little of it at my parents' house and oh, that was just... You love it. And so then I did a little bit at my neighbor's house. And it just kind of evolved from there into, I really should start some kind of a business doing this because this is so fun and I can have control over it. I can mm-hmm. decide when I want to do it and how long it takes and how much time I want to spend. Mm-hmm. Now that word business... <sighs> Doesn't that just ruin everything if you take what you love and turn it into a business? I guess it depends on how you do it. (laughs) Yeah. So what's been your experience with that? You didn't just go out and say, okay, now everybody, I'm doing this room redesign business now and you can hire me to come in and change your room. Well, I started thinking originally, okay, that's what I want to do. So, okay. Um... I started doing some research, and as I was looking, I I was seeing all these other businesses out there across the country that that's what they were doing. It was the same. Everybody was doing the same thing, or they were teaching other people how to start their own business doing a room redesign or or staging. And I thought, you know, I really want to do something that's a little different, that's not just me go out, rearrange someone's room. Because part of that is a lot of people say, well... I can rearrange furniture. Why should I pay her $300 to come in and rearrange my furniture? So mm-hmm. I I needed to come up with a way to create enough value that they could see how valuable mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. I, you've got me going on a couple of ideas that we're going to follow up on right after this first break about what we're going to do with those interests that we have and the things that we love to do. Awesome. Okay. We'll be right back. Thank you for joining me for the Live on Purpose radio podcast. It is truly an honor to be a part of your prosperity team. Please visit my website, drpaul.org, to get connected with other tools for you and your family. There you will find links to my weekly e-zine, Empower, Harnessing the Power of the Mind, and to the free Parental Power teleconference that I host every week with my wife, Vicki. You can also check out upcoming events, or pick up powerful information products. Feel free to contact me directly with questions, comments, or to book me for your company or private event. Email me through Dr. Paul at liveonpurposeradio.com. If the pile of books you want to read is growing faster than the pile you have read, then Abundant Reading Systems can help you. After taking Abundant Reading Systems course, I dramatically increased my ability to expand my knowledge in a much more efficient way. My fastest test today was in 7,000 words per minute. I highly recommend this program. From what I've seen it do for other people who've been through the entire program and from what I've seen in myself today. I've teamed up with Abundant Reading Systems to offer a single-day intensive speed reading workshop that will at least double your reading speed, guaranteed. This belief started to grow inside of me that I thought, you know, I can really do this. I can read, you know, as fast as I let myself read. 
and uh, ended up doubling my time, my speed reading time, which was really good. This is David Hinton, founder of Abundant Reading Systems. I want to personally invite you to join us for our next event. Visit AbundantReadingSystems.com now. Abundant Reading Systems, reading at the speed of imagination. Okay, so we've introduced this topic pretty well. This isn't a show about redesigning rooms, although you're going to get some ideas, and we're going to give them a few gems in, a, in probably in the last segment. Is that okay, Sounds Angela? Sounds great. We're yeah. going to pick your brain. <clears throat> yes. I want to back up just enough to help people see this process that you went through. So here you were. You were realizing for whatever reason, and, and this could be, because of economic reasons or financial reasons or employment reasons or whatever that you need a change in your life. Okay. And how many of us are there? All right. Absolutely. When you start to make that change and, and you realize that there's a reason why you have the dreams that you have, why you have the interests that you have. And it's okay for you to pursue a course that allows you to do what you love doing and find a way to do what you love for the people who love what you do. That's the key <laughs> right there, isn't it? It is. To having a lot of fun it is. in your business. And business doesn't have to be this stiff, you know, go out and try to sell something to people who don't want it sort of thing. In fact, that always fails. But business succeeds when you do what you love to do for the people who love what you do. So... As you were going through this process, Angela, you had, I know because uh, we've talked about this before, you started to bring into your life coaches, mentors, advisors, team members who could help you to see more clearly a direction that you could pursue. And I know that we've been involved in some similar programs before. Um, Talk about that process for you and what it did for you maybe highlight a few of the key points or realizations that you had as you were creating this, this opportunity. These were really key parts of me figuring out what I wanted to do. Uh So often, you know, you, you have, you have ideas in your mind about what you might like, but often you need someone else to, to, to help you along with that, to give you some insights that you may not have thought of, things that they have mm-hmm. experience with that they mentioned to you. They, so, I mean, so what happened was uh, I had had some coaching sessions with Dr. Paul. And in mm-hmm. those, we had many opportunities to be kind of figuring out what is it that, uh, what direction is it that you want to be going in? Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. huge, I had many times and a couple of them very specific, where I realized there was a specific mission for me. There's a purpose for me. That's right. And I have some gifts. I have some talents that are my very own. Mm -hmm. And there's something I can do with it. And I started opening my mind to the possibility that, you know, I do have some things. And so I, I talked with Dr. Paul and it just kind of started there and then as time went on i've met with other advisors and other Mm -hmm. coaches and once i decided i wanted to do this redesign i wanted to do it a little differently than i had seen everywhere else so i was in contact with another coach another business coach um his name was shay larson and we're familiar with shay here it was fantastic because i went through and shared with him my ideas of what i thought and and what direction i wanted to go Mm mm-hmm he took from experience that he had, he was able to listen to what I had to say and help me narrow down to a very specific direction that I had never even thought of. And mm-hmm. I was thinking, well, well, possibly five years down the road, I could have come up with that after all this experience, but I had mm-hmm. no idea. It was so helpful in giving me the direction. So now the path I'm on is completely different 
from the path that I had originally thought I would start with. Have you found that we kind of get in our own way? Oh, absolutely. And it really helps to, to have those coaches and mentors to help you get out of your own way so that you can succeed. Yes, because they can, they can help you see things differently than you're seeing them right now. Mm-hmm. And, and some of that is their experience. And some of that is, is just you being open to recognizing that there are other ways to do things than just the way you think. Mm-hmm. So it, that was a, that was a huge, made a huge difference for me. I had a couple of really interesting interviews in the last year with some high level business trainers and coaches and mentors. And uh, you can go through the archives of Live on Purpose Radio and you'll find all kinds of fun stuff that we've done along those lines. But I'm remembering a couple of themes, Angela, as you're sharing your experience. And some of these top level coaches and advisors in the world of business have this idea that as you identify what it is that you have to offer, go out and start giving it away. And this goes against a lot of what you might assume would be good business practice. Just go out and give it away. You've been doing that. Will you share with us what you've been doing with that? It has been amazing. It has been. What, what What I've been doing is I've been going out and doing redesigns for people for free. And I do it because... Now, wait a minute. You dare say this in a published <laughs> I show? Just, I want you to know that this creating value for people, something that's valuable, it comes back to you. It'll come back to you. Mm. It, it will happen. So you don't mind letting the listeners know that you do this for free? I do do this for free. Now... You're not going to go I, out to every person who's listening do, today. I only do one a week. And if you okay. are very interested, you can email me and I can put you on the list. It may be months down the put road. In, but... Submit your proposal or yes. application. Okay. All right. But the reason that I'm doing this is because I want people to recognize how valuable it is. Because once they have had it done, they're like, oh my gosh, people come to my house and they can't figure out, did you get a whole new set of furniture? What happened? What did mm-hmm. you do? Mm-hmm. And so then they share it with their friends and then they share it with their friends. And it's a great way for, for them to share my blog, the place where I share all this information. I take the before and after pictures from the mm-hmm. homes that I go to. I post those on the blog and I'm showing a very specific principle with pictures, visual pictures. And as I do that, it's creating a place for people to go and see what things they can do on their own. And it doesn't cost them anything either. It's another way of sharing Mm -hmm. this information that's very valuable that can help them to be able to make a difference. Do you realize what's going to happen with this, Angela? What? Well, you've thought through a few things. You don't know what I'm thinking right now. (laughs) You are creating a demand for the value that you're willing to give away for free. But that demand will soon outpace your ability to give it away for free. Yes. And and even if you choose to continue to give it away, there will be people who want it bad enough that they're gonna be they're gonna be offering to pay for it. But not only that, you become here's I don't know if you listened to the interview I did with David Meerman Scott. He wrote a book called The New Rules of Marketing and PR. It's the number one marketing and PR book of two thousand seven. And David pointed out, he said, the way to really get things done in terms of marketing your product or your service is to become a thought leader, to become what I call a benevolent expert and make yourself available in a way that people can access for free to go get that information. You become the trusted expert in that area. And then, and David has done this with his particular area of expertise. He charges $25,000 per appearance now to go speak. Wow. Now, how did he do that? Well, the same thing that you're doing, Angela. Well, this is part of what I'm also trying to share is teaching people in a class, 
environment. So mm-hmm. I get to groups of people together that are interested. We right. show a presentation teaching them these very principles. Mm-hmm. So they go away with some knowledge that they didn't have before. They can now go home and do some things that they didn't even know how to do. And they will then share right. it. To improve their life without a huge outlay of expense. It is amazing. It's mm-hmm. amazing. You can create this wonderful, cozy, comfortable atmosphere. You don't have to go spend a lot of money. In fact, you can do it with spending no money. Mm-hmm. You may not have everything you need, but at the time when you're ready to spend money, you'll know that's right where that lamp needs to go. That's right where that rug needs to go. Mm-hmm. So you've mm-hmm. gotten okay. some skills now. So Dr. Paul... Being the skeptic that I am, actually, I'm a pretty positive person. (laughs) (laughs) But you know what? I wanted to know what this was like. And so we invited Angela into our home. In fact, there will be pictures at your blog site. Yes. Probably by the time people listen to this, they're going to be available there. So go to Angela's blog, imaginecozy.blogspot.com, and there should be before and after pictures there of Dr. Paul's bedroom. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I don't know if it's going to be identified as such, but I don't care if it is. Okay. I want you to see it. We had, I mean, it, our bedroom was okay. Yes, it was. It was It was pretty good. It was very functional. It worked. Right. It looked, looked pretty good. So Angela came in, spent a part of an afternoon with us, and we moved a few things here and there, and we added a few splashes of color here and there, and a little bit of greenery, and some of the principles that you're going to share with us in just a few minutes. And it totally changed the feeling of the room. Now, this is a great analogy for life, too. What if you could take the life that you have right now with your current relationships and with your current skills and talents and abilities and rearrange that just a little bit to totally change the feel? And this is what you do with space. Yes. And this is what I try to help people do with their life. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> Those are the same thing. Those principles, they work, don't they? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. So I want to encourage you to go look at those those before and after pictures and just start thinking about what this means for you. What can you imagine in your own life? And can you create something that's more cozy, you know, in whatever area of your life it is that you want to transform or renovate or... How do you say it again? Redesign. Redesign. Yes, just redesign. Redesign your life. Why not? How cool, huh? Yeah. All right. In our next segment, I would like to get into just some of the specifics of the things that you share with people about what you do. Okay. That'd be okay? That sounds great. All right, great. We'll be right back. This is Shay Larson, IdeaOrbit.com, with the World of Ideas Report. When was the last time you visited a museum, a club, or a theme park and had to get your hand stamped? Have you ever looked down at the stamp and had dollar signs pop in your head? That is exactly what happened to Mike Brown, a 22-year-old from Costa Mesa. He launched a company called Handvertising USA, where X truly marks the spot. His company allows corporations to get their logos onto the rubber stamps used by venues and clubs around the world. Clients spend the whole day or at least a few hours at the venue and will look at the stamp right on their own skin many times. They even have to spend 30 seconds looking at it just to wash it off. It is pretty hard for companies these days to get good advertising impressions, let alone get stamped right on their audiences. Handvertising has gone global, and Mike Brown discovered his first million-dollar idea. The next time you get a stamp on your hand, know that good ideas are just one thought away. This is Shay Larson, IdeaOrbit.com with the World of Ideas Report. I've got a great idea Wouldn't you like to know You probably can't bear it So I guess I'll have to share it 
In a time of drastic change, it is the learners who inherit the future. The learned usually find themselves equipped to live in a world that no longer exists. Eric Hoffer Shifting gears once again, there's a few basic principles that you could just share with people right here over the podcast. Yes, there are. To immediately improve the feeling of the space that they're in, whether it's an office or a room or whatever. Mm -hmm. What are those principles? Well, the first one I would say has to do with lighting. Okay. Now, some people have a couple lamps in their room. Some people don't. Lots of people have one overhead light that's at the top of the ceiling, and that's mm-hmm. it. When they come in the room, they flip the switch and it's on and they use the room. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that's going to create a more comfortable atmosphere is additional lighting. And that okay. comes through, the, the easiest way to have that happen is through lamps. You can get okay. a lamp. Now say, you know, you may have one lamp in your in your living room, but if you can put lighting in three different spaces in a room in a triangle pattern you create Mm. a more cozy feeling okay and if people are having a hard time picturing that you've got examples on your blog site yes i have a section that talks just about lighting but what you can do go into your little boy's room and borrow his lamp from his nightstand you can borrow a a light from the basement or from the attic A, a lamp it can be a floor lamp it could be a little nightstand lamp It can even be some candles, but if you will place them in a triangle pattern in the room, so it's on a table or on a shelf or on a mantle, Mm -hmm. you turn them on, your room is going to be one step closer to cozy than it was before. That's just a step you can take very simply. Very simple. And it doesn't mean you're going to leave the lamp from your little boy's room in there, but what it's going to do is give you an idea of what that feels like so then when Mm, you come into that room you turn on all three of those lamps rather than the overhead light you sit down and your room just it feels so much more comfortable Mm -hmm. you want to prop your feet up you want to pull out a good book or get a good movie on Mm -hmm. all just from creating that now this is really this is a funny thing i have a good friend and uh she came to one of the classes that i taught Mm -hmm. and she is not a, a, a visually creative I mean she doesn't like this kind of thing it's not her not her forte she doesn't love it like you do no hmm. so she came to my class just to be supportive of me <clears throat> well she went home and she was really excited about it she found some things in her own house made some changes loved it well a few weeks later she went to visit her sister who lived further away and uh Her sister's room had been the same for about 14 years. And she said, hey, I learned some cool things. Let's change your living room around a little bit and make it more, feel more comfortable. Her sister Mm -hmm. wasn't terribly excited about that, but she let her do it anyway. So Mm -hmm. she changed the room around, added a few of these little things we talked about. The teenage niece comes bopping in the living room, plops down on the couch and said, this feels so cozy. Uh Uh-huh. And she was just thrilled because this is not her thing, but yet she took those few skills, was mm-hmm. able to create something in her sister's house, and it mm-hmm. made a huge difference. And and her, her teenage niece was able to just really feel the difference. So the first thing is lighting. Okay, lighting. Lighting. And you're just saying bring in a lamp. Yeah, it's as easy Put as that. Put it on a little end table. or And when you did our bedroom... Uh, you had us put some little lamps in there on top of a little stack of books. Yes. Which was both decorative, but it also raises that light up a little bit. Yes. Gives a little different uh, cast, mm-hmm. I guess, of the and, light. And it just makes it feel like your lamps are not all exactly on the same level. Mm-hmm. You want them to kind of be on different levels. So sometimes books are a really great way to raise mm-hmm. certain uh, 
lights that you might want to have just at a little different height. So, and I learned something while you were over there. Oh. Because you had us take take books uh, that we have on our shelves, you know, hidden away somewhere anyway. Mm-hmm. But just pull them out. Take off the little dust jackets, the shiny jackets, so it looks a little more... Library what? feel. Kind of a classic yeah. library. More of a classic look instead of mm-hmm. the shiny look that you get from those those slick dust covers. It's amazing. Books yeah. are wonderful accessories. Mm-hmm. And almost everyone has books. But you take a few of your hardbound books, take the dust covers off, place them around the room in different places, and you have a wonderful accessory. Wow. Cool. Okay, so lighting is number one. Lighting is number one. The second thing I would do that makes a big difference is fabric. Now, the way you would add fabric, the easiest way to add fabric is a few toss pillows. Now, many of the homes that I've gone into, we've taken toss pillows from the bedroom, brought them into the family room. Or we've taken toss pillows from the basement, brought them up on the couch, put them in the living room. Mm -hmm. As we've done that, it's adding an element of fabric. Mm -hmm. Another thing you can add is a throw blanket. Just take a throw blanket from the linen closet or one from the bedroom. You bring it in, drape it over the couch, a couple toss pillows. You've added fabric to the room. It feels cozier. It feels more comfortable. Mm -hmm. You can also add um, drapes, curtains, Mm -hmm. just an easy panel down the side of of each side of the window. It absorbs sound. So Mm -hmm. it helps Mm -hmm. to create a warmer, more comfortable feel in the room. Now, we did this with our room Mm -hmm. where we went and just we found some fabric on sale. Now, typically, you can just use whatever you've already got there in your room. Mm -hmm. But we we wanted to add a little bit of color there, too. And so with Angela's assistance, we we just got some fabric. You don't have to go buy expensive drapes or anything like that. And I found some old wood scraps downstairs cut them to the right size, we stapled the fabric to the wood and screwed the wood to the ceiling. And it looks fantastic. It turned out good, didn't it? It looks like custom drape job. It does. So anyway, you can go see the before and after pictures and you'll get a sense of what we're talking about. Those uh, kind of maroon colored drapes on the sides of our mm-hmm. Going from the ceiling to the floor. Ceiling to floor. And that's how we built them. And, and it, it created a cozier, more mm-hmm. comfortable atmosphere. So... One other element that I put in the the fabric category is a rug, because even if you have carpet, if you can add a rug, it helps just one more layer, one more layer Mm -hmm. of comfort. Now, as as we're having this discussion, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, it's the Dr. Paul Holmes show again. Here are some ideas, though. There's a number of reasons that I wanted you to share these ideas, and first of all, It's really cool what you can do with very little effort and very little expense. If you just know these principles, and we've covered two so far, Mm -hmm. lighting and fabric. But I'm thinking also of all of you people out there who have an office or who have a, a space that you spend a lot of time in. Why not create an environment there that helps you to feel more on top of things? And it does make a difference. Yes, it does. It it helps you to be less distracted. It helps you to feel good about where you are with your life, even if things are falling apart around you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Create an environment that doesn't feel like that. So if, if you're wondering why we're doing the design tips, just try some of these things and see if you can actually make a difference in your life. If you can do that physically... I bet you you can find ways to do that mentally and emotionally and financially and all other ways too. It makes it really does. If your physical environment is is inviting, it's mm-hmm. comfortable, it helps you to be able to be in a place mentally that you need to be in for whatever it is that you're working on. Right. Okay, so there's a third principle. Okay, here's the third principle. Natural elements. If you can add to a room, if you'll notice this, this is so fun. If you go through, look at any home magazine, you will see they always have some kind of a little vase with flowers in it, Mm -hmm. a bowl with apples in it, Mm -hmm. or a pot that has twigs in it. Mm -hmm. These are all natural elements. Now, you can go out in your yard and just clip a few branches off of a bush, stick it in a vase, stick it in a jar or or a pot. And bring it in, sit it on your mantelpiece, it makes a huge difference. 
Now, so anything natural. Anything basically. natural. A bowl mm-hmm. of pine cones. I mean, mm-hmm. these are all things. A, a nice, pretty bowl that's got lemons in it. Anything mm-hmm. natural. So that's it. I mean, a little bit, a little pot of of greenery. You can get a little plant. A little. Um, so when flowers are blooming, tulips are going to be coming out. You just snip a few, put them in a jar, mm-hmm. sit them on the side table. Huge difference. So now what I want you to do is whenever you're looking at home magazines or you see any kind of advertisements, you always will see vase of flowers, bowl of fruit, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. little green plant. Notice it. It's in there. Wow. It's always in there. Okay. So lighting, fabric, and natural elements. And so what you're saying is if people will take just those three ideas and go do something. They don't even have to do all three. Is that what you're saying? Right. If you're just even do, we're, we're trying to make this as simple as possible. You do one of those things, it's going to feel better. If mm-hmm. you want to feel even even more cozy, you take another step and you take another step. So Angela, have people given you feedback about how this makes a difference for them? It is the funnest thing. Oh my gosh. Sure. I have another friend. She also came to one of my classes does not like this kind of thing at all. She thought, well, I'll go try a couple little things in my living room. She moved a few things around, brought a couple lamps in, brought a nice blanket in. Guess what? Hmm. Her two teenagers are hanging out in the living room. They're, They're on the couch playing their little handheld games, reading, whatever. She said they were never in that room before. Hmm. Isn't that crazy? She said it's the strangest thing because that was never a place that anyone ever spent time in. They couldn't get out. They, they wouldn't leave. It was, it's very interesting. I've had numbers of people tell me this. Their kids just want to be in that space. And for me, this is one of the things that is the greatest side effects of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do, don't parents want their kids especially I'm thinking, okay, mothers, don't you want your home to be a comfortable place for your family to gather? Don't you want your, your kids' friends to want to come and spend time Mm. at your house? Wow. This has made a huge difference. People Mm -hmm. want to be in a place that feels comfortable. And we're not talking, we're not talking great big house, beautiful furnishings. It does not matter if you have a tiny apartment or a very large house. You just got to take these few elements and you add them in and it Mm -hmm. makes that space somewhere you want to be. And other people want to be there with you. Yeah, they do. Which is a real key in families, isn't it? Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, we'll be right back. We got one more segment. Stay with us. We've got Angela Ingo today at Live On Purpose Radio. Raising kids is one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences we can have in life. Your children didn't come with an owner's manual, so it's up to you to learn whatever will assist you in your role as a mom or a dad. Join me and my husband, Dr. Paul, for a free weekly discussion about all of the hot topics in parenting. Listen to what others are saying about these calls. By applying the things I've learned to the parental power calls, I'm finally becoming the mom I always thought I would be. I really like to use parental power as kind of like a reference book. So as I have concerns with my parenting, I like to be able to look up on the blog and then listen to whatever podcast seems closely related. So I like the variety of of topics, the variety of age groups that are addressed. I'm on the parental power calls as often as I possibly can because I know I'm going to come away with something I can apply to being a parent that very day. Let us join your parenting team through parental power. Just send an email to Dr. Paul at liveonpurposeradio.com to register for the live calls. Or just check us out first through the link at drpaul.org. All of the previous calls are posted on our blog site, where you can also add your own input. Let's team up to start parenting on purpose. This is Kirk Weasler to tell you about morebetterbooks.com. Morebetterbooks.com is where you can find more better books for a more better life. Not only that, let me tell you about some of the very fun and cool select titles on morebetterbooks.com. 
you'll want to get a copy of The Dog Poop Initiative. This best-smelling book could change your life forever. It certainly changed the lives of thousands of Boeing employees, as well as school teachers, parents, leaders across the United States and in Israel and in Germany. And you can get your own copy at morebetterbooks.com. Whoa, that's not all. What about The Cookie Thief? This classic tale told in a rhyming format, fully illustrated with very fun hit messages. Pick up a copy now today on morebetterbooks.com. Other great titles there, Finding Your Pathway to Mastery, Beyond Illusions, Make It Great. These titles are only available on morebetterbooks.com. Go to morebetterbooks.com today and begin to have a more better life and live that life on purpose. Welcome back to the Dr. Paul Home Show. As we were going through, <laughs> we had a fun chat during the during the break. What are we going to do to wrap this up, Angela? And, you know, to me, it is so obvious that we're talking about principles here. And you have chosen to apply these principles in a very unique way to help people to redesign and transform their space whatever their space is. And as we were chatting during the break, that's the same process you go through with your life. You're redesigning your life. That's how it's happened for you. It is. It's the funniest thing because when you think of it that way, well, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. We did some Mm -hmm. rearranging with things that I had already. And it was just that this is just how it works. Oh, I forgot that I really had that lamp in there. Oh, it, when mm-hmm. you're when you're reevaluating, like when we're redesigning a room, people think, "Oh, I don't have anything." Mm-hmm. I go to people's houses. I say, "I don't know what you're possibly going to do. I don't have anything." It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what house I go I to. I think we might have told every you that too. single house I go to. This happens, and you know what? We walk through the house. We pull out things. And, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, I didn't remember that I had that in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would have never turned that bookcase on its side. But look how different it looks. It looks great. <laughs> so the idea of what we're doing with this is, basically, this is what I did with my life. I was trying to figure out, what do I want? What do I have already? Sometimes we aren't even paying attention to what gifts that we have. Or if we do, we're kind of burying them. We're kind of thinking, oh, that's not really very important. Or that's mm-hmm. not really worthwhile. We've forgotten about them. We've... Yes, or you forgot. Or, oh, I didn't remember I could do that. But yet, mm-hmm. when you're... I-, I was really spending some time focusing on, what am I good at? What do I love? Where do I want my life to go? So I was looking for things. So just like when you redesign a room, you walk around the house... You're looking for things. You're looking. Mm -hmm. What can I bring to make this room better? Same with your life. What is it that I can gather from other places inside of me that maybe I haven't thought about before? Mm -hmm. That is really what happened with me through the help of different coaches and advisors. So see, when I come in, I'm like a coach. I'm an advisor coming into your house. Okay, Mm -hmm. what can we take from this room and that room and that room? If you have a coach or an advisor, they also can help. So they help you to pull Mm -hmm. out things from places maybe you hadn't thought of before. And that's what happened with me. I was Mm -hmm. able then to spend some time getting some assistance and then taking some of those ideas and really creating something that wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. And you don't always see the value of all of that stuff that you have. No. Because you've come, become so familiar with it. You've pointed things out to me today, Angela. As we're coming in, Angela is going to help me with my office too, folks. And we'll post pictures about that yes, too, okay, we shall sure we? Will. Mm-hmm. Um, she's doing the same thing here. I can't stop her. She just did, she naturally does this. And this is the part that that is so exciting to me because the things that you are naturally inclined to do and the things that you love doing do not come naturally to other people. And they will value that if you can bring that to help lift and elevate them 
and to help them to solve some challenge or problem that they have in their life. So bring it, give it, share it. And I see you doing this, Angela. Mm -hmm. And just today, it was funny, we came in here to the podcast studio and uh, I have a few things in here that have been here for months. And I didn't even think about using those. And they're perfect. They're just what we need. (laughs) Which you immediately recognized. And you you didn't know. But I remember several months ago, Angela, and if you don't mind my saying so, you know, we've we've known each other for a while now. Mm -hmm. And I remember discussions that we had where I was able to do that same thing for you. Absolutely. Where I pulled something out of a place that you hadn't thought to look. Absolutely. Angela, look at the value that's here. And you're like, really? (laughs) Oh, yeah. I guess so. You know, because you get so stuck in your own head that you don't always see it. Right. I'm hoping that you listeners today, as you're listening to our discussion here, are starting to just rummage around a little bit. In your home, yes, but also in your life. In that mind of yours where you've got dreams. What did you do with them? Are they still there? Are you allowing the media out there, the mainstream media, to convince you that life sucks? That the economy is terrible? The economy has nothing to do with the value that you can offer the world. And if you start to get really clear about that and and remember what it is that you love and what it is that you do well, start bringing that. And don't worry about how am I going to make money off of this? That'll come. But start sharing it and go out there and start creating some value for people. Your blog has really started to take off. It's been so amazing. It really has. It, mm-hmm. It's just been being spread through word of mouth. And that's what happens when you're creating value. People want to share it. They want other people to know about it. Mm-hmm. Which is something I want to encourage all of you listeners to do. If you have received any value from this today, two things that I want to ask you to do on behalf of Angela. And you stop me if I misspeak. Okay. Okay. I want you to go see her blog. She's done a great job with this. As you do this, look at all the great stuff Angela's doing, but also think about this thing didn't exist a couple of months ago. One month ago. One month ago. One month ago. Didn't even exist until Angela decided to create it. What is it that you've got that you could create and bring to the world like Imagine Cozy? And it won't be Imagine Cozy because that's Angela's. Right? Right. That's your shtick. That's what you're doing. But everybody has something that they're passionate about, that they love to do. Start putting it out there. And you can create a blog. That's not even that hard, is it, Angela? Oh, no. It's amazing. Very, that, very uh, surprise you? Very surprising. Well, I'm going to twist your arm a little bit about encouraging you to start podcasting and doing some other things. I have do. to look into that. It's, uh, it's webinars, really interesting. Teleseminars, is, things like that. It's such a process of, oh, well, I guess that's a possibility. Oh, all these doors open yes. as you're moving along that path. That's right. Whereas before you were close to it, mm-hmm. you didn't think that those things were there. You didn't think that that, you know, mm-hmm. that I had that lamp in the other room. I forgot about that. Now, as you visit Angela's blog and as you see the good work that she's doing there and you start to realize, oh, you know, I could do a little of this or a little of that. At no additional expense, just applying some of these principles that she's taught you about lighting, fabric, national, natural elements, as you start to realize, oh, my life could be a little better, my space could be a little more comfortable and inviting if I were to just do this or that, then go do it, give it a try, but then the next thing I want you to do is to share that with someone else that you would like to have that same experience. And this, you said word of mouth, there's also word of mouse. Absolutely. Which is absolutely the way we get around nowadays on the internet. Yes, it is. So go share it. Share it. Think about your mom. Think about your sister. Think about your office mate. Think about a coworker. Think about, you know. And if you have your own blog, it's a great place to post blogs that you love. If you end up loving this one, post it on there. Your right. friends will check it out. Create a link. And it's always so wonderful to have comments. If you if you mm-hmm. like what you saw, oh, make a comment. It really is wonderful to know if what I'm putting out there is really making a difference for you. 
This is a concept that I think we really need to understand in the new age of the internet and information exchange. And that is, okay, so here's Angela. She's out here doing what she does really well and sharing it freely with other people to increase the quality of their life. I want you to go do the same thing. The way you can pay Angela back, you can send her a check. You'll take checks, won't you? Oh, yeah. You can send her a check if you want to, but that's not what she's asking for. She's asking you to comment on her blog. She's asking you to link to her blog. She's asking you to share it with somebody else because the more traffic she gets to that blog and the more lives that she can bless with what she's doing, the better position she is in to receive a return for that as well. Yes. And that becomes the economic engine that allows you to continue to create that kind of value for people. So understand that in the new world of marketing that we have here, the way you can express your appreciation to Angela or to Dr. Paul, for that matter, mm -hmm. go to the blog, post your comments, share it with other people. So I want to encourage you to do that as well. Share it with other people. Spread the word. Word of mouth. <laughs> as we say in the industry, right? That's great. Angela, an amazing adventure, isn't it? It has just been an amazing adventure. Every day now is, is a different a different experience for me than it was before mm -hmm. because I am spending time every day doing what I love doing. A little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. But I do it every day and it's in my mind every day. Whereas before, I was kind of just going through the motions of getting everything done that needed to be done, doing my mm -hmm. responsibilities, but yet I wasn't focused on something that I really loved doing. And I'm mm -hmm. not letting it overtake my life, but I'm adding it to my life so that it becomes so much more on purpose. Mm -hmm. So what is it, as we wrap this up today, what is it that you would really like for our listeners to remember and maybe think about as a result of having listened to this to this episode? Well, I think what it is is that you can redesign your own life. Mm -hmm. And it's very, you, you do it a little at a time. It doesn't necessarily have to be some one big huge thing. It's little steps, just like creating a cozy room. You do it one little step at a time. Mm -hmm. And as you're recreating, what do you want your life to look like? You do it one little part at a time. But if you pay attention, that you really do have some things about you that are very valuable, things that you do well in a way that no one else does. Pay attention to those. And as you do that and focus a little bit more on that direction, Little things will come to you. Little inspirations will come to you. And you'll be able to then take those steps to redesign that picture of what your life looks like. It really is something that can happen a little bit at a time. So don't, don't allow that to frustrate you or discourage you. It's actually really a good thing. It is. I remember one point where, where you and I both realized at about the same time that there will be little inspirations that will come on a daily basis, have the courage to act on those. The ones that you have had today, act on them. And you know what? Some others will come tomorrow. Yes, they will. And the will. next day. And the next day. Angela, thank you so much. You are welcome. It has been fantastic. It's been a pleasure. Go to the blog site. It is imaginecozy.blogspot.com. This is Angela Ingo and Dr. Paul signing off. Go out there and live on purpose, everybody.